hi, I'm Les Carlson. I'm here with Chuck King, and we have Ken Tamplin on ah! Skype. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first episode of Shout here you go. on Frontline Records. Right on. Rewind. 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 <laughs> it's over because the title was Never Stop by Shout. Yeah, listen, I want to jump in here because here's the thing I love about this show. When I get together with guys that that are in bands together and friends that make music, it's amazing how the chemistry is so fresh. It's there, even if you haven't seen each other for a while. Yeah, it's true. You guys got a lot of energy. So I want to know, how did you guys first meet? Can I answer that, Chuck? I don't know. Dive in. Okay, and then you chime in. Tell me if the story's right, if I'm making stuff up in my mind. Oh, yeah. um, I was in a band, uh, an unnamed band, a professional band, and um, really disillusioned. And I'd spent four years in this band, and uh, we 
got a, a record deal with a very famous producer named Dieter Dirks. He produced the band The Scorpions and Accept and whatnot. And um, but I just I just felt like the Lord was not it wasn't in it. You know, it, even though the, the leader of the band said he was a Christian and it was a secular band and trying to make it in the Christian market, uh, it just did not feel great to me. And so I came off this tour and I was actually living on my mom's living room floor with my newly wedded wife. Um, we only been uh, we only knew each other six months and we eloped and we got married. And so we were paying for vo- very expensive vocal lessons for guys like Ron Anderson and also Dr. David Kyle and others and so forth. And I was cleaning Carl's Jr. carpets at like 2 and 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning just to pay for this stuff. And so I was hawking a, uh, a, a wireless guitar system and uh, put it in a recycler. And, and I get this and, thing. Yeah. And, and by the way, so I get this call from this guy named Chuck. And he says, you know, I'm, I'm calling about your yeah. wireless guitar system. Yeah. He goes, you know, I don't think I've even bought anything from the recycler this, before. This, uh, <laughs> this is this is a true story, man. And that is I the only thing I mean, I've ever bought from the recycler. <laughs> I, I know. And then, and I would always weird. wimp out. I would think, and, then, and then it was even, it got even weirder still because like I had a a pretty decent price on it, whatever. But I, you know, I I kind of just like I just needed to eat. It was one of those things, right? And it was the only, I mean, coming off a big tour, big band. You know, the Monsters of Jesus Festival, <laughs> Monsters of Rock, and all these different things. And then I'm selling this. I get back in the States, and I can't even eat. So I'm, ho- I'm hawking this wireless system. And so this guy on the phone says, hey, you know, I've never really bought anything on the recycler. And, you know, I don't really need this. But um, And if you ever want to buy it back, like, you can buy it back whenever you want. I'm like, who is this guy? Like, yeah. what the heck, you know? So we began to talk. And then he, I come to find out he was in a band called Idle Cure and and musically, not because of any difference of, um, uh, you know, uh, personal things. But he said, there's some musical things I kind of wanted to do different. And we started talking about music and stuff. And I said, let, let that's, me, exactly uh, what I, that's exactly what I want to do. Let, let me chime in real quick. I'm going to chime in real quick because because I mean, just to get kind of the, 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 the flow back. Because I, I went over to your house to get the thing. So I, I, I'm talking to you on the phone. And I, and I go, you know, I'm, I'm just going to, we had to go to Long Beach, go to Long Beach to, to, to go pick up, meet you and go pick it up. Yeah. And, and I, when I, when I walked in and I was in, and met you and I was talking to you and stuff. And, and, and then we, I just started kind of asking you what you did and you told me, you know, but, you know, you were in the band and, and, uh, and I knew that that band was, had Christian people. And I said, so you're a Christian and you go, yeah, I am. And I went, awesome. So am I, you know, and I told you, cause we were getting ready to do a new year's Eve show. Uh, it, I think it was one of, one of the things they did at Disneyland. I think Disneyland. Oh, it was Disneyland. Oh, oh, oh. It was Disneyland. Yeah, it was Disneyland. Disneyland. Farm. Uh, then you know, North Bray Farm. North Bray Farm. I wanted a wireless. Yeah, I was I, just, I, just night, wanted, uh, I wanted to be able to run around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You think so? I, that's why I was. I was just going. I'm going to get a wireless. And then, then I saw. Like, that's how I got a hold of Ken. I was just searching that thing out. But we wow. instantly became friends. It was like instant. Hey, I never instantly. got that wireless back. I still want it. How much is that? <laughs> you I, want probably, yeah, I probably got it on one of my covers. I don't think I ever get rid of anything. You please come help me get rid of stuff. You know? But I did. But get you can buy it back. For like yes, two right. Weeks you can still buy that. it back, dude. I'll sell it back. He's I got it for like two weeks after that. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, you know, what's funny. Kenny had, you know, you had you uh, when we were there talking. I added my Idol Cure. I was going to show you my Idol Cure CD. You know, it's, it's like, you know, we, I played a couple songs on that for you. And at the same time, you go, oh, you know, I, I got this uh, thing of me singing a Lou Graham song. And you had that that thing of you singing Lou Graham. Uh, yeah, like, Foreigner. I want to know what love is. Yeah. just like Lou Graham. And I was like totally blown oh, away. Oh, you do. I was like man. super impressed. You, you know? sound more like you know? Lou Graham than Lou Graham. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You, know? you know, actually, the funny story about that was I, I ran down to an audition with Geezer Butler. And um, he had some weird band way back when. And, uh, you know, I remember running down Sunset Boulevard with a ghetto blaster in my hand. I broke the handle and it fell and fell on the ground. And my wife is chasing me in high heels and all this stuff. And I'm trying to make this audition. And the funniest thing ever was I gave them a picture of the band and I kind of circled the little thing over here with me and this previous band I was in. And then I got this letter back that said, if you submitted a, a, a blah, blah, blah with you as a circle with a picture in the band, we're not interested. And I'm like. Okay, there you have it. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. How but, fast was Lynette in high heels? Because that, that was just the, you know, Lynette running that was, in high heels. That was a long time ago. That was back when I was cool in the 80s, yes. early 80s, yes. hey, but, or mid 80s. But um, one other thing that was interesting about that is that's how I came about to Frontline Records was because of Chuck, because Chuck was signed with Idol right, Cure to right. Frontline. Yeah, so yeah. he brought me into the Frontline family. It, it, you know what happened? I mean, just to not, you know, because I was already in a band, we were already doing our thing. Kenny was in a band. 
And and it just you know we, we just but we became friends and we went out to dinner a couple of different times like they said when well, you showed up in your rock clothes at the first time we went to dinner, but you came over a few times. I had a studio, you know, and I made a little studio yeah. in the house, and uh, and I was just going and I just you know we we messed around with you know some you know just goofing around with some song ideas, and for whatever reason we just hit it off. And I was it, my whole thing with Idol Cure and it's just you know because I I, mean, I love those guys. I mean Steve was one of my best friends, still is one of my best friends. I don't see him all that often anymore, but I don't see you all that often anymore either. But you know it's just you know we were good friends and and am I going off on some? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm he's I'm, looking at the paper I'm like because wait a minute, a he's here. just verifying that what you're saying is true. <laughs> no, <laughs> the right information here. I'm, no, I, no, here's what I'm looking at. <laughs> He's telling this story, and I'm going, okay, the first album, it won't be long. The co-writers were Ken Taplin and Chuck King yeah. on That's every right. song. So yeah, we weren't together on the, on the so first So I rest album. my case. Yeah. This is yeah. just working. Yeah. So, so what happened was he, he, had this, he had this cool, uh, was it a 16 or 8-track recorder? I it can't was remember. only 8-track. Yeah, but we turned it into a 164-track recorder by the time <laughs> yeah, we Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I would go over and I'd lay an idea down or he'd have an idea and we'd collaborate on, the, on all this stuff. And um, and then we just started making these demos that we loved. You know, we just you, fell in love so with we, it. We both just figured, let's just do a side gig. You know, let's just do a little side yeah. thing. We can write songs on the side. Won't, you won't mess with your band. Won't mess with my band. But yeah. it was messing with our band. I mean, because I don't. I mean, Steve was kind of bothered about it. And I, and I love Steve. And I, and I just think you know, you know, he, it was my a, band fired me over it. <laughs> <laughs> there was just there was some tension. And, but I, you know, the, the whole thing with Idle Cure is, you know, because I was going to stay with Idle Cure was just I know that Mark was going to college to become a, you know, did, you know, he was he was going to be a. You know, a, a big pastor. business guy. You know, not not a pastor yet. He was going to be. Oh, a that's right. That's guy. before that. I mean, that's he had right. no no intention of trying to go anywhere in music. Um, you know, uh, Pete was and working Pete, with his parents. He was, he was Pete, going to take over. Own a giant plumbing company. And, they were going to take over that. You know, and it was just yeah. I talked to those guys about let's go for it. let's go for it. None of them really. It was just like nah, I can't really do it. And I was, so I was just like I felt like no one really wants to go for it. Except and, you two guys. And so when I met Ken, he wanted it. Ken had this, yeah, we're going for it. I'm just like, I'm with you, buddy. Let's go. I want to I go. Get, let's try. At least try. You know, if, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But let's at least. This try. was way before Red Bull, folks. <laughs> yeah. Who needs Red Bull? Wow. You know? Yeah, it was. This is It Won't Be Long by Shout. And it gave me a chance to show off some flamenco guitar solo on the front of the song. And I'm going to be honest. It was inspired by Tesla. I loved Tesla at the time. And the guitar player that I learned from also, Scott Van Zen's cousin, is the drummer for Tesla. And so uh, that was a very Tesla-inspired song.
Les, did you know that with each Frontline Rewind episode, we have a specially curated Spotify playlist? I did not know that. I'm on my way. <laughs> Kitty, I got a question for you, dude. Quick question. Yes. What were the three demo songs we did mm. at, at Chuck Gray's studio? What, they were on the first uh, album. What were one, the, one of them? One of them was it, one of them was it won't be long. Are you sure? No. But that's what my <laughs> I don't think it was. I, I think one of them was. And, no, 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 no. I know. No, no, no. I know. I know for sure. Enough, it was. It um, could be. Uh, um, <laughs> we did three songs. It was. Um, you would think I'd know this, right? For all oh, these. We did. Uh, wait, cobwebs in the brain. How long has this been ago <laughs> since we've done this? <laughs> Only thirty years ago. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> Timeless Love. Timeless Love is one of them. Back. Okay. Now we got two yeah. more. What were the other two? I mean, I look at the thing and I, got, it, it was none of them on the list. And I go, I know we did two of them. No, songs. no. Timeless Love was one of them because that made it on the record. Yeah. Um, because I remember Mike McLean telling me that he thought my vocals were uh, pitchy. And I'm like, what? Check this out. Okay. So <laughs> what we, we do this demo, about, right? Girl? We do this demo. Pitchy. We, 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 I'll show you pitchy. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. So check it out. We did this demo. Candy blasts off to Hollywood, goes up and down whatever Sunset Boulevard to every record company there was, and goes in there and just waits until he gets to meet one of their A and R guys and hands it to him directly. You know, yes. double, yeah. hands it because we, we weren't, you know, we were trying to, get, you know, we yeah. were trying to make it, make it. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we were going to try to go for a secular label that would have a little bit bigger budget at the time. And yeah. and so Kenny, we had Capital and Atlantic, both wannies, but we spent every penny we had in life making that demo. Uh, yeah, and they wanted us to go back, ace the keyboards because the problem was I was influencing you. See, you came from a more metal background. I worked in the construction yeah. trades, and I was listening to whatever was on the radio, which was Brian Adams and Survivor, and you know, yeah. just, you know, and Heart and all that stuff. And so I was like, our album sounded like that. You know, it was more like Heart, you know, yeah. and, and Brian Adams types. Our first, you know, you can notice you notice the difference on our first album. Yeah, right. It was more that way, mm -hmm. but the. Um, the record companies came back and went, no, ace the keyboards, crank the guitars, and you sing gnarlier. We know you got it. We right. know you can do it. Go for it. Right. And we're just, and we're just sitting there going, we don't have any money. We can't do it. We didn't have a – We didn't. Have, in fact, Roy a, Thomas Baker, I had a friend that worked at the police force. He was a sergeant, and he gave us – Roy Thomas Baker, the producer of Queen's albums, you know, um, uh, personal – uh, uh, a home address yeah. and I knocked on his door <laughs> and Letitia, his maid, answered the door and I'm like standing, he's in there and I handed her the CD or cassette, excuse me, there was no such thing yeah. at the time. I handed her the cassette and uh, she took it sheepishly back and he uh, sent us back a message and said he would listen to it and he liked the stuff and he wanted to hear more material but we were broke. <laughs> <laughs> so guess what we did? That's why we ended up at Frontline in Jimmy's <laughs> right. office, sitting with Jimmy going, Jimmy, we need you to help us make an album, but yep. we're going to get someone else to distribute it, uh, yep. and you're going to sell it to them. And we made this yep. whole wheeling dealing with Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's what, and, that's what and, the first Jimmy album won. was really our <laughs> and album Jimmy. that was going to get sold to Ether Atlantic. Yeah, but he, I'm sure yeah. he kept yeah. the hook in there. No, no, and no. Jimmy no that never happened. <laughs> Jimmy never remembered that conversation. Yeah. You know, we signed was, our six was, point uh, deal and, oh, and it was like oh. he forgot all about it. I would never make a deal like that. Yeah. But anyway, that, that's that's yeah. you know. But that's why we get checks from Adele now. I would never make a deal. You know, just, but you did, Jimmy. I was right there. Nah, I'd never do that. Okay, Pinocchio. You know, yeah. But all right. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but we're getting checks from Adele now. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God anyway. Bless him. Yeah. That was that was good times, man. I you want to do friend. this right now. I want to hear Timeless Love. I don't remember it. And timeless love, many the worlds of hearts of pain. There it is. You heard it. Straight for me. Sometimes, so nothing I can do, or could you 
we got we got the, the story on the lead for Shout. <laughs> oh, that's Go has got a really weird lead in it. Lanny Cordilla. Oh, he yeah. did a thing with Lanny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lanny was Kenny's guitar teacher. Okay, oh. Lanny. That's that's right, how Lanny okay, came. All right, this is going to be a little risque, but I got to share the story because it's true. Okay, way before, way before Frontline, and Lanny will admit to this. So when I was 16 years old, I was looking for, I, I found all kinds of different guitar teachers, but the guy that I liked was Lanny Cordola and he was awesome. Super awesome. It's a true story. And so, but it was a bummer because my lesson was on Saturday morning and he lived in a trailer park, like in Santa Fe Springs, California, like, I forget where, but like whatever. And, and so I, I remember, I don't remember if that's the exact area, he'll correct me on this, but uh, it was a bummer because my lesson was at 9 a.m. And I'd knock on the, on the you know, the trailer park door. And then this risque looking girl would come up to the girl and go, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm here. Mommy. I'm, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm here for my lesson with Lanny. She goes, Lanny's asleep. Yeah. And then another girl would come to the door. I'm like, uh. We gotta edit this stuff out. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, no, you don't, man. You gotta tell us it's, it's the raw truth. Yeah. So anyway, this was he wasn't a Christian. Christian days on Lanny, he became yes, a Christian obviously. later. Yeah. Lanny became a Christian later. Yeah. That's and right. I witnessed to him for a long time. Yeah. Anyway, so some other girl, what are you doing here? And I go, I'm here for my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for my my guitar lesson. And so then he would come to the door, and then he would like kick them out. And then I'd get my lesson, and I would do this every Saturday. Same and thing, I'm like, oh my dude. God. Like, you know, it took us twenty minutes, and like, you know, I'm I'm paying for a full hour, and I'm only getting forty minutes. By the time we're done, when the next student shows up here, <laughs> and so I did this for like a long. So that's how I met Lanny. So then later, I witnessed to Lanny, and he was a really really open to the gospel, which was awesome. And then he started asking me a lot of questions. And I started sharing with him, you know, the straight up gospel, just saying, dude, you're living in sin. You're not going to love this. They don't love you. You don't love them. You're like that. And he had this band called American Heroes. And uh, at the time, and so I'd go down all the way down to Hollywood and bring a bunch of friends down there, whatever. And then we just became friends, you know, we yeah. just became good friends. And then we've just been friends ever since. So, uh, and, and he, you know, he's in House of Lords and Jeffrey and all these bands and Vanilla Fudge and whatever. And then he started playing my, on my records. And then, you know, he dedicated his life to the Lord and he stopped doing that yeah. completely, you know. So. Oh, not only did he stop doing that, he just, he is just following God doing yeah whatever yeah. god tells him to do he's right like, yeah. awesome right yeah he's awesome. right so so wow. you know we all we all are on a journey we're all in process and we're all you know uh no one's perfect and yeah. it's it's neat that we can be resilient enough to like mommy <laughs> 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 you know but to, to walk into a suit. and again when you're 16 you know you're just you're just there with your guitar in your hand you don't yeah you're not thinking about anything else yeah. you know what i mean you're not supposed to be but yeah, yeah so yeah. and then so the rest is history so yeah. uh, how did this uh part well we're gonna kick back again? in because well, in the, on the first album on the, on the first album first album in our studio when we right. were talking we, about the intro we, to shout we right? had the, you know because kenny and i did the basically kenny and i did that whole album that's Pretty, true yeah it was just him and me we go to the studio every day i'd be you know we'd set the board set up and and we just you know I'd be pushing buttons and stuff. Ken would be singing, doing whatever we were doing, going back and forth. We had the uh, uh, the guy that rented the studio to us. He'd just go off in another part of the house and just let us have the have the studio. Right. So we just owned it for the whole time. And um, but you kept bringing up Lanny one day, you, and you go, um, we, we had Dennis Holt play drums. We had Dennis yeah. Holt. We had Lauren. That, that, Lauren wasn't part of the band yet, but we had Lauren play. And Mark, Mark Hugenberger. It. Mark Hugenberger played the keyboards. Played the that? keyboards. Yeah, Mark yeah. Hugenberger. But but you you were talking one day about Lanny. You go, you know, we, we should probably call up Lanny. It'd be cool just to have Lanny come play it, play it, you know, solo on it. You know, what do you think, Chuck? And I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. So you did. You called him up. We had him over there, and and because um, the song that shout, you know, has that the, you know has the du double intro lead. It's a pretty commercial sounding rock song if you uh -huh. listen to uh -huh. it. Uh, pretty commercial sounding song. And so we were kind of like, we should have a commercial lead in that thing, you know, pretty commercial lead. But but with Lanny there, we just, Kenny, Kenny just goes, Lanny, go nuts. Play whatever you want. Go right. nuts. And the lead that's on the thing is Lanny just going nuts. And we were laughing so hard. We were we were on the floor rolling, laughing so hard. Because yes. it sounded like it's like a little mic. It was like Robert just, Fripp it was like a on cartoon. steroids. And, and I remember we were looking at it, we were sitting there kind of going, well, do we, should we do something else that, you know, play a commercial lead to it type thing? And, and we'll, we'll just listen to tomorrow morning, you know, let's come back tomorrow because it was late at night. 
We'll come back tomorrow morning and listen to it again, and, and we'll make our decision. If we want them, we'll just play our own lead to it. And right. uh, so we go home, come back the next morning. Play, we're back on the ground, rolling, laughing so hard. We said we have to keep it. We have to keep it. It's probably the most uncommercial lead you could put in a commercial <laughs> song. But it's so, it, we just laughed every time we heard it. We just It was so funny. We kept it. So when you listen to the lead, it's Lanny Cordola. Yeah. And that lead, and it was hilarious. Should have been there. So did you guys do touring together? As yeah, a, heck as yeah. Show? Okay, well, okay, <laughs> yeah. let's do it. Yeah. Well, what was I mean, great? Uh, I mean, we would do the red eye of going to Europe 
And I would like try to like, you know, we were broke. Come on, let's uh, face it. Yeah. So we would we would roll into Newark, New Jersey with a six hour layover and everyone laying on luggage and or whatever. <laughs> and then uh, we get into Paris. Uh, Paris wasn't our final destination. We get no. into Paris, get on a train and go to Frankfurt, Germany, and then have the guy not show up for four hours and drive us all the way to Stuttgart or something. Brutal. To start our tour, check, check this that out. was that was shout, man. Wow. Remember Holland? Where, where did we pull in Holland? Where it was all the the, the bad guys were that were you know, oh, the oh, gangs yeah, just outside of Amsterdam. Christiania. Amsterdam, we were in just outside in the, it was outside the red light district in Amsterdam. It, it was gnarly. The train station. Okay, okay, we pull in the train yeah. station. Right, we got a ton of equipment. So we're doing a tour. We got all of our stuff, yeah. and we have to we're piling it all out. We have a huge pile. It's just, you know, it's you know it's probably a 10 foot by 10 foot by four foot hall pile of amps and guitars and all of our stuff that we're trying to tour with that we had on the butt had on the train that's now in the middle of a train station and there's the the over the loudspeaker keeps going keep your bags with you be careful there are you know pick pick pockets pockets and and all the station. <laughs> and so kitty lauren and joey take off and leave me and eric kibby our sound man to watch everything and there's like these gangs. Of we like had to find guys. the guy that was They're supposed gone. to pick us up, or we'd still. This... We had to find the guy that was supposed to pick us up, or we'd still be there right now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, that's what? good point. Anyway, everybody's gone, and me and Eric Kibby are sitting there. With the Lauren was was nice enough to give me the little little the little shocker thing, that little sparker thing. Oh, yeah. you know? So that. that's our big that's our protection, right? So we're sitting come on, you guys. There's gangs of guys, five and ten guys, standing back about. 50 feet away, looking at us, sizing us up, trying to check us out. We're both trying to look <laughs> as tough as we could, you know? And I keep going, Ur, you know, just shine those little sparker things. I was terrified. I go, any minute those guys are going to rush us and we're going to get beat to a pulp and they're going to steal all of our stuff. So what was the most phenomenal thing that happened out there as far as just the, the, the reception of the crowds and your fame as it kind of progressed? I mean, our you fame? guys, I mean, Chuck, there was a time of fame for you guys, right? I mean, it's like, Chuck, do you want to answer that? You know, I, I'll just say, I just, I was shocked, to be honest Where with you. you kind of went, how quick, whoa, how everybody quick, knows you know, who we well, are. Well, back in the 80s, it just, it just, well, Kenny was working his tail off. I, I got to hand it. I mean, Kenny kind of was the manager, everything. He was, he was, we were in every paper. He had us in everything. And what Frontline was doing the stuff on the thing, but Kenny had us in all the all the other rock magazines. He had people that he knew from the other band that he was in. He had us in everything. And I remember we'd go to a concert, and all and there's just a line of people, a huge line of people, you know. And I'm going, they're there to see us, you know. We're pulling the parking lot. I'm going, wow, you know, you know, you're kind of looking up for us, you know. I mean, we're who are we, you know? It, it, you know, we were just, you know. And as I remember the first year that we played, we played Cornerstone, we were in the very far back room, you know, the very little way back room. In fact, they, they have that one on concert. On yeah, concert. now someone just posted Dude, this like six months ago. This is so hilarious. I've told people a hundred times the story <laughs> that Kenny, we have this song Dancing Around the World, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so there's two funny stories. I got I to preload a funny story with a funny story. In that concert, in that concert, we show up, right? And... We have the writer. We have the writer. The writer, Kenny Gibson, we, we need a couple marshals. We need drums. All the things that we needed to fly in to go play that thing. But when we show up, there's just a Tinker Toy drum set that they had there. They had a little fender that looked like it was like 40 years old and it just never had the, anything changed. It was falling apart. And they had a kind of really old marshal that was somewhat okay but not very good and kitty goes dibs <laughs> immediately on the bar marshall <laughs> well, sorry kitty just goes dibs yeah. you know and I'm, I'm sitting there looking at the fender going oh my gosh what am i gonna do you know how are we gonna do this you know joey's looking at the drum set and going i can't play these you know so then that the coolest thing in the world happens there's a band gonna open up for us that shows up and they're just young guys and they had awesome stuff. stuff, you know, and, and I'm like sitting there showing the guy this little wimpy fender thing, and I'm like practically crying, and the guy goes, dude, I got a double stack Marshall brand new, I'll just play that, and I just went, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. the Jesus first time you dipped yourself saves. into a bad deal, man. And you got the one you wanted. Yeah, you got the one you wanted. You get to keep it. I get the That was the best sound of Marshall I think I've ever played. He that shall be awesome. first, shall be last. All but, right. But, so I want to hear this song, Dance Around okay, the World. You will. You got to hear it. And then when you hear it, you're going to play it on this thing. We're but play also, it on the show. there's a video. Ken, in the middle of that song, decides to start inviting people up on stage. Now, the stage was not a normal stage. It was like tables, I think, they'd set Someone up. Someone built it, and it, it was oh, The thing suspect. was wobbly okay. like you have no idea. 
And kids uh, starts inviting people up. So and then more people start jumping up. And more, the kids so we're just, like going like just, this as we're standing it, still. The stage I'm is going I'm starting like to freak this. out. The thing, I go any second. And then now pretty soon there's like a wave of people. The entire crowd. And there was probably, I don't know, 600 people in there. It was, it was packed. Yeah. So they all start climbing up on stage. So now you can't even tell who the band is anymore. There's people everywhere. They're <laughs> jumping. Up. There's some big 20-something-year-old guys jumping up and down, and the thing's shaking. And I'm starting to look at you going, Ken, Ken, you guys, Ken, these, and you're still singing. And I'm just like, get them off the stage. We're all going to crash and burn, you know? We're going to die. And you can still you can see no, it. That so video's little by little, out there I'm like going, I'm like kicking people off the stage going, no, oh, okay, no. thank you, ladies so, and gentlemen. Man, we're still trying to play our song. song. We're still playing the song right through the whole thing but I was dying a thousand I also want to get away moment I was like dying a thousand yeah we almost there. died on that one you know <laughs> okay so this but is, we never broke the song we finished the song perfectly we did yeah. always so yeah. this is dancing around the world dancing yeah. around the world and, All and right. by the way it wasn't one of our hits it was just one of those songs where I would just well, yeah it happened it. it's off the first, the first album song. yeah yeah dancing around the world Rewind is brought to you by Mize Music Group, extending the life of legacy music. I was dancing around the world. And and, and you, it's on YouTube also. It's, a, it's on YouTube. It's on, the, you know, the whole story you just heard. I don't know who had cameras back then. I mean, it's very terrible, you know, video. It's, it's horrible. You can barely make out who so we are. So if I look up Dancing There's around the world, somebody shout. set up a shout uh, Facebook page that has all that stuff. There's a, okay. All of a sudden, there's people and all these videos start showing up of, of stuff that we did way back when that I've never even seen before. Didn't even know there was videos. I love that. Stuff. It's so cool. I love it. I saw a video. You probably have a bunch yeah. of videos people are yeah, showing up with like, now, huh? Yeah, I've never seen that. It's so cool. Yeah. It's like instantly you just kind of go back in time and you just kind of go, wow, I remember <laughs> that, you know? And, and by the way, at that time, something else that was interesting, I don't know if you how much you remember of this, Chuck, because it's a long time ago. 
Um, because of the previous band that I was in, I don't want unnamed band, the producer, Dieter Dirk, from the band The Scorpions, had called me and said, hey, we have another band named Accept. In fact, they didn't even tell me the name of the band. Sorry, I shouldn't even say that. Um, they said it just lost their singer. This is two weeks into basic tracks of recording. By the way, we really did record in Cucamonga, California. There is a place called <laughs> Cucamonga. That's, that's where right. we recorded our, wait, our wait, album. Wait, you, wait, you mean Rancho Cucamonga? Uh, yes, yes. We recorded the album in Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. So anyway, so um, I get this call in the middle of our basic tracks. And by the way, it's we make lighthearted things and we're having fun. And I love that too. But there's also a commitment to Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And there's a commitment to... Uh, wanting to follow God's will. And it's not about just making it and fun stories and all that stuff. I mean, there was, we had a commitment to Jesus Christ. I make no, I have no problem saying that, shouting that from the rooftops. And so, um, you know, at, uh, right in the middle of basic tracks, two weeks in, Dave Jansen, by the way, who was our engineer towards the middle end yeah. of this, yeah. God rest his soul. He's the guy that did the EQ on yeah. uh, the recording for uh, Butterfly Kisses with Barb Carlisle and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Anyway, yeah. was our engineer at the time. And, um, uh, I got this call from Dieter Dirks saying, hey, our, we have a, a really well-known band, and I know you were in, I don't say his name, what the heck, Joshua. You are in this band, Joshua. You were, we were signed. Uh, we can yeah. actually uh, uh, cheat the label, Frontline, and roll back the contract and lie and tell them that we had this previous agreement that was with this band uh, to get you to come out and sing for this band Blah, 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 blah. Now, by the way, this information happened later. I didn't know this early on. So they flew me over like Christmas Day to go out and sing. I didn't even know what band it was when I got there. I suspected. And so they offered me this, you know, big deal to go join this band, whatever. And, and, and I, in my heart, I just went, you know, Lord, this is unholy. And, it, it, you know, it's sort of like there's your perfect will and there's your permissive will. And then there's kind of that space in between. And it, it's and everything in our lives are gray. I'd love to say it's all black and white. It's not. You know, we make decisions and we live with them. David and Bathsheba, it's a bummer. But but we get in a situation. And, and I went there and I tried out and they gave me the gig. And and it was a, a lucrative gig. And I just lucrative. Went, yeah. Yeah. Very, 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 very lucrative. Lot. It was very lucrative. And I, and I went, you know what, Lord? Your hand's not in this. This is not your perfect will. And so I, I thanked him, I apologized, and I said, I really feel like I'm supposed to go back and finish this album. We were only two weeks into basic tracks. This, yeah, know, we and, yeah. and, and in fact, it was kind of also, too, when they told me all the chicanery they could have done with the contract and all this stuff, and it's so dark. Well, it, it, was, a, I, it, was, a, it was a huge secular band. I mean, they had, they had giant concerts and stadiums all over Europe. Yeah, they were doing, yeah. I mean, yeah, King, yeah, it, was it, would have been, it would have been, you know... You don't yeah, have to go there. Touring, you're going to be there. I mean, you sign the dotted line. You're the open. You're the lead singer of this band. I forgot the, what was the name of the band. It was, uh, and, well, it's except in except, the except. They were they're huge back then. I mean, the they were huge back then. Giant. Yeah, their their main their main lead uh, a song was "Balls to the Wall." Yeah, was, which yeah. Like, but they were yeah, but they were on MTV. They were on everything. My son had every album. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, so so we came back, and and I really feel like the Lord just you know. You know what? I, I wouldn't change a nanosecond of what God's done in our lives. Not a nanosecond of it. We came back. You know, if I'm going to tell you, I'd love to say Frontline was super awesome. Jimmy really had his shady little business practices and whatever. And, and, it, it, and all that's supposed to be, you know, and the rest is history. We lived happily ever after. No, that's not what happened. But what did happen to this very day, Les, and I know that you know and you can relate to this, yeah. people still send us emails and messages on Facebook Sorry. how much what we did. So our goal um, wasn't to be the best secular band. Our goal wasn't just to be the best Christian band in the bubble. Our goal was to be real yeah. and raw yeah. and yeah. honest and to live a life and, 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 and live it out and, and also to pursue excellence and do things that we could compete at a, at a, at a, at a, a world level, yeah. you, know, at a, at a, you know, whatever. And so um, I believe Shout did that. And I think, and, and actually Frontline did give us the chance yeah. in their weird, sordid, twisted ways, <laughs> gave us the chance to do that. And <laughs> I'm sorry, Adele, yeah. but it's yeah. true. No, no, there, was, there was good people there. There was just, there was know. good people there, man. Yeah, there was there good, was good people, there. people there. True story. So, uh, and we get to still be here today to share that God is real. He's faithful. Here we are today to tell our stories. Most of our friends are all dead. Think about it. 
most of the guys in a lot of the bands or they can't sing or can't perform. I mean, if you really think about the math of like, we've outlived 90%, 80% of our predecessors and, you know, Chris Cornell and a lot of guys that I loved growing up and just whatever. And, you know, God rest her soul. No, I'm not in any way trying to uh, minimize that. But I want to get the gospel into this. Like we're having fun and yeah, I want to no, do that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But, and, I, and I don't want to make it only about that too. It's, it's life. But I want to really drive home Jesus Christ is Lord. He's yes. faithful. He's been faithful from the second we started. He's faithful to us today. We don't always know where we're going. I never thought I'd be a vocal coach. I didn't even want to sing at anyone's wedding or bar mitzvah or funeral for that matter. And and now I, I, I realize I really do have a gift to teach. I mean, I spend so much time and effort on my voice to try to do that. Chuck has gifts. You have gifts. And so we need to uh, trust God with those gifts and move in spaces that He we never imagined he'd take us, whether that's a, an offer of something amazing, we think. Uh, I think truly that would have been my demise because I know my nature, and Chuck knows me too, uh, yeah. that um, I would have killed myself wanting to stay on top of the bubble. And God had different plans, man. Yeah. And that's great. And I'm grateful for it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, amen. I, I'm inspired to hear that. And, yeah. and I, I'm amazed at how much we are alike and how much we got out of following Jesus. When the Amen. world would laugh at us and say, you got nothing or whatever. No, no, no. We know who we know. Yeah. And we know what he's done. God covers us. us. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, <laughs> and it, it is amazing to, to hear from people and what, you know, what the music yes. has done for them and how God's, you know, we were talking about that the other day, how the gospel of Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our music and our lyrics will always be hip. Yeah, and right. on time. That's right. In fact, Chuck and I, Chuck and I wrote a song, uh, and Chuck, I don't know how much you remember of this, and I remember us sitting there, and and there was a sweet, sweet, sweet moment um, in our relationship where he had young kids and was struggling to make life happen, and and we were writing this uh, uh, song. Um, what was it? Um, Facts in your face, you know, it was called in your face. Uh, the song, and that, and by the way, the Lanny by inviting Lanny to play. Uh, on the first album precipitated us inviting a bunch of guitar players to play on this album. So Marty Friedman, like, all these yeah. crazy guys played on this, this uh, second song. Album. The second, album. And second, al- second album. And um, what was interesting is we were talking about Bible prophecy and we were shooting around all these ideas and, you know, we came up with you know, evidence pointing to a truth that must be known. The weather is changing all across the globe. Pestilence and famine shaking life like none before. While Mother Earth is quaking more and more, the facts are in your face, you know. Uh, and and we, so we, wrote the, we wrote this very prolific, just taking scripture, it was nothing of our own doing. And, and you know, um, ancient words predict the times of kingdoms to rule with economic plans to unite. While all the theories about the origins of life come and go, yet a single cell points to its design. The facts are in your face. And so like we're writing these really lyrics, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, awesome. and it was funny because you could take that song back in 1988 and put that song today because it's God's word. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. never returns void and yeah. it is yeah. spot on Absolutely. the money. Yeah. And, and so we're sitting there, we're, we're writing this stuff. And, and today some guy goes... It almost reminded me of like the people that talk about scripture that, oh, they must have written that book after the fact. He goes, you didn't write that back in 88. That was written after the fact. You go, oh, no, read it It, in print. Look at the date. It was written in 88 because everything lines up Uh with scripture. Uh Wasn't something that we said. It was just scripture. And all we did was, was, you know. And Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, if we are faithful to do that and to honor God in, in his word and faithful to proclaim his gospel, I don't care who laughs. Yeah, yeah and right. they laugh all the way to the bank. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to laugh all the way to heaven and not laugh. I pity, <laughs> I pity the, 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 the end result of what that might mean. But I, I just know who I have, have believed in. I'm persuaded he's able to keep that, which is not mean to the deal is his return. So anyway, there you go.
So, so Kenny? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Les, this is the closer for part one. I mean, wasn't it fun, guys? It was, it was awesome. Not too shabby. A lot of fun. Not too shabby. Yeah. To Not too shabby. <laughs> All right. Make sure that you're back in here for part two of Shout with Ken Tamplin and Chuck King. Troll, I rewind. Troll, I rewind.